Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Square Enix pre-stream. We got, as you see, about eight minutes left in the thing there. I've actually been streaming for a bit here. We were trying out the Chris Tales game. It's good. You should go check it out. So, I have already asked everyone what I thought their predictions were going to be. I'm going to go ahead and give mine really quick. Mine are really cynical. I think we're going to see the FF7R trailer that we've already seen. I think we're going to see the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer that we've already seen. I think we'll see basically non-news about Avengers, which we kind of already know. And that's and and probably something about Shadowbringers. <laughs> something about Shadowbringers which we already know. That's my prediction. Nothing basically. Hopefully I'm wrong. But thank you very, very much, Emperor Valerian. Also, you're up very late. As ever and as always, much appreciate your support. Thank you, sir. Yes, you are doing that right, and consequently, welcome to the Year Club. I hope you enjoy the gold badge there. Hey, it's Rax! No, I'm kidding. Now, hang on. I stray. Or us. Ba -na -na -na. Okay, what's with the FF5 music? Don't tease me about FF5. Don't do that to me, Square. I love FF5. Don't you dare. Sorry. Anger. Ice Tray! Ice Tray! You're there, right? I need you to redistribute $50 of your donations that you've given to me. Or just request a refund. One of the two. <laughs> You're on my list of redistrib redistributes. I'm still looking for all these people to, to pop in. I don't even know, what, what was this for? What'd you put this for? It's... I don't even have this down. Oh, right. I know what it was for. You donated quite some time ago for a Suikoden lore run. As I talked about last Sunday, lore runs are kind of... So if you want a refund, done. If you want to redistribute it, done. Just let me know. I understand, Jamon. Salty about what, Pillars of Snow? The fact that they were making proper remix of the FF series and then stopped for reasons that are that to to my knowledge have never actually come to light. That we still don't actually know why they just pulled the plug on those. Uh, pick one, Ice Tray. Quick, pick one. It's okay, Venters. I told him no. Obviously, like I just did. Shorter and even more pointless than last year? I mean, whatever. Okay, you got it. You got it. So we'll go ahead and do that then. So we'll put that Good towards. Evening. Welcome to Square Enix Live. Please take your seat. The show will begin in five minutes. Woo! Maybe. Probably not, actually. Yeah, no, we'll see. I, I have no hopes. I have no hopes. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to sound negative. I don't want to sound cynical. E3 has kind of bombed this year. EA was boring. Microsoft was good. With a few bad parts. Bethesda was garbage. Digital, Digital Evolver was fun. Ubisoft was bad. Uh, the PC gaming show was... What it always is. Kind of weird with some cool stuff. <sighs> yeah, exactly, Javin. I'll be honest. I'm actually legitimately looking forward to what Nintendo has to say and show tomorrow. Tifa reveal. I mean, they didn't at the at the concert. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes, I did, Rax. I, th wow. That's all I have to say about that. I feel bad for you guys. I know you and Valerian were both there, and just wow. 
Uh, Zastel, I talked about it at length during Lore Week. It's, that Lore Week is already up on YouTube. To summarize, Lore Runs are being shrunk into a very rare thing because they take up so much time and so much effort and so much focus. And honestly, they generate very little money. So yeah, Lore Runs are being shrunk in focus. That's, that's what I mean by that. So Lore Runs are going to be more rare and more spread out. That's, that's, that's all. That's the summary. Uh, we will be, and I do mean we, will be talking about all the E3 stuff at next Sunday. Next Lore Week. So, the Kingdom Hearts trailer stuff, which we're probably about to see. The FF7 trailer stuff, which we're probably about to see. Yes, Adster, the lore runs that are still in the bank are still in the bank. I have committed to that. I said I'm going to do them. Pretzel is awesome for subbing for, for 12 months. Welcome to the Year Club. You're awesome. Thank you. Put it towards something. You're great. Thank you, Pretzel. Yeah, no, I, uh... I, I, I have said I'm going to do those five lore runs. Those five lore runs are happening. I just don't know when. Please don't, Javin. Please don't. Don't, don't, I, I can't take I already have a massive headache right now. Don't Welcome do it to me. To Square Enix Live. At this time, please remember to silence your cell phones and avoid... Oh, hang on. Let me silence my cell phone. Thank you. The show will begin Let's shortly. Let's see here. Silence my cell phone. No, who is that? It's Arathrobo. Ar Ar was putting it towards Soibapunk. Thank you very, very much, Rothrobo, as ever. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, I got 1 minute and 34 seconds to pull off this stupid joke I'm going to do here. Come on. There it is, there it is. There we go, my phone is on silent. Anyway, sorry, sorry. We're done, we're done. You got it, Pretzel. You got it. And thank you again, sir. No, Zastel, why would you do this to me with 10 seconds of despair? I've got 10 seconds. Thank you so much, Zastel, as ever. Much appreciate your support. Thank you. If you know what you want to put that towards, let me know. If you don't, you can put it towards whatever. But either way, thank you very, very much. And we're done! Oh shoot, where's chat? Where's chat? Where's chat? Where's chat? Where's chat? Where's chat? Oh, and then there was just okay, so bring the chat back. So still the keeper. Yes, I know, it's FF7. I mean, I'm sorry, I recognized that the moment I saw the bottom of it. How did you not know that the moment you saw that? Do you see the third option? FF7 sound design is phenomenal, and it always has been. It's probably the new trailer. There we go. It's Zach.
Yeah, this is a legitimately enthused audience right here. Please welcome Yoshinori Kitase, producer, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And also a pretty chill guy. I'm very happy to be able to introduce this long beloved title once again. After 22 years, the familiar characters we love have returned while becoming more beautiful and captivating than ever before. To our long-time fans, we thank you for your support and patience over these years, and we look forward to embarking on this journey together. FF7のリメイクするにあたってファイナルファンタジー7のリメイクプロジェクトの最初の作品となる本作では。ミッドガルのストーリーを広大にかつ緻密に語っております。またゲームデザインも今作用に最適化しておりまして、ブルーレイ2枚組相当のボリュームを見込んでおります。1本の独立したゲームとして、I could answer the why the releasing it in parts question, but it's it's a complex question. has allowed us to dive much deeper into the world and its characters than ever before. The game design was optimized for this title as well, and we anticipate two Blu-ray discs worth of gameplay content. <laughs> the first game in this project expands on the story of Midgar and is such an elaborate retelling that it has become a solid standalone game in its own right. Through the content we are about to unveil today and through all that we have yet to unveil, we will not disappoint your expectations. Your reunion with the Final Fantasy VII you know is near. To newcomers who never played the original, we present to you a completely new Final Fantasy and a perfect starting point to explore the world of Final Fantasy VII. Please welcome Neil Pabone, Senior Manager, Product Marketing, Square Enix. はい、本日はですね、ニールにゲームプレイを紹介してもらいます。So, Neil is here to introduce you and walk you through gameplay. Thank you, Katashi-san. All right, everyone. Let's mosey. Final Fantasy VII Remake features a hybrid gameplay system that merges real-time action with strategic command-based combat. Ugh, I hate it when they do this. Give me a second. The press of the square button is a swing of Cloud's Buster Sword. Cloud attacks, dodges, and blocks all in real time. His standard attacks do some damage, but they barely scratch the surface of Cloud's true potential. Succeeding on the battlefield requires much more than just hacking and slashing. Cloud needs to be tactical. He needs A, T, B. Two A, T, B bars are displayed in the lower right. These fill up slowly over time, but fill much faster as Cloud lands standard attacks. Once an ATB bar is full, you can enter tactical mode, where time slows to a crawl and you have the opportunity to choose actions from the com command menu. Katasi-san, I've had the pleasure of seeing quite a bit of the game, but tactical mode never gets old for me. I could just sit here all day long and watch this beautiful slow motion action. I think the audience would like to see more. Isn't that right, everyone? Yeah! Notice they're already showing us more real gameplay than any other thing yeah. in the entire E3. You can choose to perform various abilities, such as Cloud's Braver attack. 
Using an item in battle will deplete an ATB charge, and if Cloud has the right materia equipped and enough MP, he can use ATB charges to cast spells. Of course, this being a remake, we're sure to see some familiar faces. With the use of his iconic gun arm, Barrett is able to target enemies at a distance. Barrett's standard attacks generate ATB charges similar to Cloud, but his abilities are entirely different. Switching between characters in combat is done with a single button press, which makes rotating through party members a snap. Speaking of other party members, Katasi-san, when are we going to see Tifa in action? Maybe, maybe soon. Soon. All right. Characters will continue to fight even when you're not controlling them directly, but it's up to you to choose how and when ATB charges are used. You can maximize your effectiveness by switching between characters or issuing commands to characters with full ATB bars. Every enemy has a focus gauge that fills up as you do damage. When the gauge is full, the enemy becomes staggered and you'll deal bonus damage. Tactical mode evokes the command selections from the original Final Fantasy VII and allows players to enjoy battle while taking the time to think strategically. For players who prefer fast-paced action, abilities and spells can be bound to shortcuts for immediate execution. Shortcuts make combat extremely dynamic, but the choice of using them is entirely up to you. Right, Katase-san? That's right. The game has been made so that you can choose how to play. I hope players get excited about this. Well, that's I'm nervous about staggering. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we look forward to showing you a whole lot more in the coming months. For now, let's see how Cloud and Barrett do against a more formidable foe. Tifa was not in the party in the original here. Tifa doesn't join the party until substantially later. A barrier? Never seen this defense system before. Thought you were the expert. So what's your brilliant genius? No 
Notice the AI takes cover whether you put them there or not. I mean, I know not to take that kind of thing for granted, Pyro. This one right here is for the planet! We won't let this thing be pushing us around here. I don't think so. And down goes another! All you in for it now! Taking over. Going in. You're as good as dead. Showed you how it's done. Come on, we got me. Please welcome Tetsuya Nomura. <laughs> of course, he chose his one winged angel as his song. Thank you for joining us, Nomura san. It is an absolute honor to have you here. Katase-san, how do you feel working with Nomura-san once again on Final Fantasy VII Remake? はい、あの、カルタですね。原作の FF7以降、ま、何作もね、一緒にね、あの、その後も仕事はしてるんですけども、ま、今作のね、再びね、あの、ディレクションってキャラクターデザイナーそしてね、ストーリーとね、がっつ
ご用意してますのでぜひご覧ください。So finally, there is something that we wanted to show you.、Um, yesterday, we showed you a short version of a trailer at the Final Fantasy VII concert. But today, today we have a longer version. So, then, I'll go ahead and show you. Please take a look. I mean, I'm glad you guys are all excited, but you notice I've been right so far in my cynical predictions. Although I do love that they showed us a real breakdown of gameplay. That's awesome. These sewer rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. Saving my life. You think he's a keeper? Oh my god. Y'all gotta look at the bigger picture here. Nothing worth fighting for was ever won without sacrifice. Shinra Tower looks gorgeous. Look at that. Got you now. You're not real. How was I wrong, Nerdman? Hey, just the sun I wanted to see. Okay, now I was wrong. I know what happened with you guys in Seattle. Oh, oh. 
How do you feel? With us misfits. Come on! <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> Ready when you are, young master. Oh my god, this is so exciting. All of your oh my gosh. I love the setting, it's so beautiful, man. Time to hit the road. It'll be fine, Daniel. As long as we're together. I want to see what his power can do. Come on, Daniel. You got this. Starting to be able to control his powers. Yeah, more streamer pandering. No, I shouldn't do this. Stop it, you crazy? On the ground, now. Oh. I miss Dad. I'm so sorry, Daniel. I'm really glad I got to meet you. It's the same for me. Ah, bro hug. What a nice dude, man. It's the puppy! The puppy! We got a puppy! I already put up the streamer pandering, yeah. Although, if you want to make it official, let's see here. Daniel! Whoops, I closed it. Didn't I? Oh, it's right there. Oh, this oh is gonna God. be the cliffhanger. They're so sad! God damn it. Stop, Daniel. I said stop. Don't grab me! That was so intense. It's my power, not yours. What the? No, that's the ending, isn't it? This game is awesome. There we go. Yay, Life is Strange 2. So anyways... Uh, yeah, no, Awkward Losing Streamers is already up there, guys. Sorry. From ages long ago, Miasma has blanketed the world. Crystal Chronicles? Crystals keep the deadly Miasma in check, but the crystal's power is not eternal. You probably, guys probably couldn't hear me for the last, like, five minutes. Apparently I lowered my volume a bunch. I don't know what the hell was up with that. These are the Crystal Chronicles. Anyways, as I just said, Crystal Chronicles? My asthma would consume us all, correct? Never did I imagine that it could be so bright. In online multiplayer mode, caravan with friends wherever they may be. Okay, yes, it should have online co-op, absolutely. Keep the adventure close at hand. The journey now unfolds on smartphones. Go to hell. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. This winter, embark on a new journey. So, PS4, Switch, and Apple and Android. The journey begins! Hey, look. It's another of those games that I'm the only one who didn't like. This is coming out on PC. Like every single time I pull up PC, I can't click that nerd minute. It's gonna interrupt the stream. I will not lose to you. No, but anyways, this is coming out on PC, which means you can cheat on it. Yeah, cheats. A lot of things, Torchinator. You'd have to check. I, I, I it's on my website. I have it all summarized there. Let's end this, shall we? My brand, I'll strike you down. I'm ready for you. This is our chance. Octopath Traveler. Yeah, I think that goes cut is live like now. Uh, I don't know what this is. I would sacrifice all my viewers for power. Wait. I don't. What, what is. Oh, this is Last Remnant. Is it? Man, I don't know. It is last round, but okay. Woo. Very woo. Ooh. 
lol, Nerdman. What's with the magic pictures motif? So this is Dragon Quest. Hopefully Dragon Quest Builders too. It's the one, the only, the builder's builder of the game! It's Dragon Quest Builders 2! Also known as the game I'm probably most hyped for this year. Seriously. The children of Hargon, the vile cult that worships destruction, has outlawed the building, cooking, and creation of all things, and captured the builders! All hope seems to be lost until you! A young apprentice builder manages to escape the clutches of evil. Washed up on the deserted shores of the Isle of Awakening, and with the help of your spirited and mysterious companion, Malroth, it is up to you to doff your mallet and club, unravel the riddles of this land, and defeat the hateful children of Harkon. Travel the diverse islands and discover your true potential. I like the UI updates. There is a land of adventure with many islands offering unlimited building combinations. You will have to master new crafting skills on each island, with more to do and even more to create. <laughs> Everything in Dragon Quest Builders 2 is much, much bigger. Build huge structures in a larger world with more variety and options than ever before. And with a little help from the eager islanders. The world is humongous, and you'll need your wits about you to get around. Run across open fields and explore ruins, treacherous mines, and spectacular castles. Dive into the watery depths to discover hidden treasures. Climb the highest mountains to catch the sunset. And glide home to rest up for your next day of adventure. But beware. Monsters roam this land and will need... So the biggest flaw by far of Dragon Quest Builders 1 was the combat, which was actually bad. Your quest is the enigmatic Malroth, an aggressive amnesiac with a fondness for fighting foes. Use powerful attacks on the battlefield to take down monstrous beasts! Work together with your villagers to till soil, plant seeds, and raise a multitude of crops. Be sure to customize the way you build your fields to support the kind of crops you're growing. Harvest anything from the humble cabbage and wheat to tantalizingly tasty tomatoes. Big projects require big, big help. You and three friends can team up online to build anything you can imagine. Online co-op equals yes. Oh yeah, there's a story. There's a campaign and everything, Melkor Blade. So call on your friends and build your fate together! The road you build is paved with peril, young builder. Only you can defeat the children of Hargon. Bring an end to destruction and save the world in Dragon Quest Builders 2! I mean, I've already bought this. <laughs> Mini Bees didn't buy this, but I already bought this. Also, demos are awesome. Possibly Javan, we'll find out. Old luminary. I am buying the hell out of this. Well, you're the reincarnation. This will be the second time I've procured this game and I don't care. Novish, the luminary is the root of all evil and will bring naught but misery to our realm. You shall Let's do this. I Sad that they have to mention the orchestra as a selling point, though. Do not lose heart. Do not look back. Remember, you're the luminary. We believe. 
even you. I mean, yeah, sold. Having Dragon Quest XI on the Switch is enough for me, really. Uh. Hey, goody, I did a rumination on that. Weird freaking game. Didn't have much to say about it, honestly. It was what good? Goedia? It's alright. If you asked me to talk about it right now, I don't think I could. I remember demons. Oh, excuse me. Motorsport fans from Mexico, and we're the founders of Original Fire Games. Over the last few decades, we have seen a fascinating evolution in racing games. And nowadays, you can drive almost any type of car on amazing recreations of the best tracks in the world. However, we believe it's time to try something different. We want to do this by reviving a style that pioneered racing games decades ago. Our game mixes top-down racing with a classic, sharp arcade look and top-down physics which brings together a whole range of styles and eras of motorsport. We are delighted to share this moment with you. And show a sneak preview of our game, which Square Enix Collective will publish in 2020. Join us for the ride and see you again soon. I actually don't like top-down racing games for various reasons. Yes, Pillars of Snow, although it is a It's a taste you have to get used to, Pillars of Snow. I mean, I remember that NES game whose name I can't think of. God, what was the name of that game? You know, banana na da na da 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 Battalion 1944 recaptures the No, not right. That's SNES, Rax. First person shooters. You'll need to quickly coordinate strategies with your team on the fly. Whilst keeping your movement nimble, I have to look it up now. If you hope to beat out the competition, RC Pro Am, that's the one. Multiple game modes for you and your team to dive into. Test your skills in domination, capture the flag, or team deathmatch, and perfect your tactics in the highly competitive war type game mode. Although, in fairness, Rock and Roll Racing did the same damn thing. And so did Micro Machines. Fully integrated into the game, bringing world renowned competitive matchmaking, 1v1s, tournaments, rankings, and leaderboards. Kill enemies, win matches, and rank up to demonstrate your Battalion 1944 prowess and unlock visual customization rewards. Each season will bring challenges for you to complete and medals to unlock, whilst tracking your in-game accomplishments and providing you with an easy way to compare them against your friends by in-game leaderboards. Also known as every FPS in the last two decades. It's offensive in their tracks with the rapid fire PPSH or take fire with pixel precision. I'm sorry, I don't mean to snark. Uh, that's not true. I totally mean to snark. Nothing he said is anything other than the same FPS stuff we've seen since the late 90s. And a variety of weapons at your disposal. The original Call of Duties, Battlefield 1942, Unreal Tournament. Right? You remember that. Quake 3. On Steam. Tribes. Oh, 
Mobile Mobile game. I mean, cool. I'm down with it being more publicly available. I already own all these soundtracks, but, you know, I've been collecting them for, for decades at this point. I've never heard of this game. And I've definitely not already seen this trailer. Master of Masters. Yeah, we'll talk about that a lore week. And by the way, you notice how young Xehanort's eyes are gray there? Just thought I'd point that out. And who's this... Who's this woman and why do I want her to step on me? It's a pro ZD joke. Come on. So, remind. Now my fetish is her brig one. Please welcome Naoki Yoshida. She's a whole category of fetishes, just all wrapped into one. Online. I mean, this is coming out in a few weeks. What? Where are they possibly going to tell us here? <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Naoki Yoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, that's a good shot, though. え、今日はですね、すいません、短い時間ですが、え、僕からはいよいよこの7月2日発売となるFinalFantasy14拡張パッケージ第3弾漆黒のヴィランズの紹介をさせていただきます。So we'd like to take a little bit of your time to show off um Shadowbringers Final Fantasy 14's third expansion pack, which is releasing on July the 2nd. え、2013年に新生オルゼアレルムリボーンが発売されてから、え、6年が経ちました。え、なんと世界で累計登録アカウント数1600万を突破し、え、なんとこのですね、漆黒のヴィランズの発売を前にして、有料会員数も過去最高
And there's so many new elements in the game for those who have yet to play Final Fantasy XIV, including two new jobs, the Gunbreaker and the Dancer, as well as two new playable races, the Frothgar and the Viera. Please Final Fantasy series the final Fantasy Final Fantasy VII Remake no no kidding, Pyro. It was amazing they let him, and it's amazing they pulled it off. Shadowbringers, that's the latest installment in the Final Fantasy franchise for our fans to enjoy. At least until 2020, March 3rd, when Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out. Ha. <laughs> We are pleased to bring a world premiere of the launch trailer for Shadowbringers releasing on July the 2nd. Please take a look! Well, if it ain't the oldest joke in the book. And when, pray tell, did we last have a dark night? Over a hundred bleeding years ago, that's when. In that chaotic no man's land between realms, time and space war and blend in unexpected ways. What Orianger saw was the future. That's how the Sin Eaters came to be. They were once living creatures or people that were caught in the path of the Flood. Once the change is wrought, there is no going back. The eternal light of these creatures has confounded us for nigh on a hundred years. For each we have put down, another has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. I like the look of the Sin Eaters. That's all three. Sin eaters are part of Yulmore's society, but they must be fed with ether. Living ether. beyond saving, like those who try to save it. This world has had its fill of heroes. We'll give them credit, this is basically all in-game engine stuff, rather than pre-rendered CGI. How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one possessed of her blessing. sacrifice the will of the star was made manifest i'm sorry i can only assume i misheard 
but it sounded an awful lot like you were implying both Zodiac and Hydaelyn are not gods. But they are gods after a fashion, yes. The eldest and most powerful of primals. I mean, we've been suspecting that for years. Is this? It's Final Fantasy 16. I knew it. Sweet. Whew. Looks like they're going a different direction with it, but I'm with it. I'm with it. You know, uh, I can see Final Fantasy is finally embracing the zombie first-person mirror edge genre. That is disorienting. Seriously, what is this? We all know that's what FF is really about. Hardcore parkour! Okay, that's, that's kind of what I figured. The most terrifying reveal of all. Whatever this is. Yes, Disco. At a different conference. Uh... Interesting. I mean, Romancing the Saga 3 was, in my opinion, one of the better Saga games. But, yeah. I mean, it's still a Saga game. No premiere run of this, by the way. I'm just, doesn't work. The Saga series does not work for premiere runs. Why is that? Octopath Traveler. That's my answer to you. I suppose I could also say Romancing Saga 2. If you want a more in-depth answer, you're not getting it right now. I'm still happy about this. I just... I, I, I'm happy for other people, you know what I mean? After Saga 2 got the treatment, I'm glad Saga 3 is getting the treatment, too. Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Fans the world over has surpassed 39 million downloads. Now, you know, I actually praised this game until I kept playing it. And it just kind of nosedived in quality. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. These two titles, FFBE and War of the Visions, will be the pillars of the growing world of Lapis. Actually, yeah, Pyro. This is the story of Ardera, a continent of Lapis. A 
tiny spark here ignites the flames that would embroil the entire continent in conflict. I mean, there was a lot of legitimate promise in the, in Exvius, and I mean that sincerely. A conflict later spoke. But oh my God! As the war of the and yeah, it, it basically dived into pay to play, and a lot of other problems. I won't bore you with all the details. Lion monarch possesses the power of visions as well as twin princes. Horn, the great western kingdom, governed by a policy of peace and its brave and wise king. Fenis, where the king of the savages has organized the barbarian tribes into Ardura's mightiest militant state. We saw Fire Emblem Three Houses and we thought, that's a good idea. Was it? The great eastern kingdom over which reigns its icy despot. What, you mean Final Fantasy Mobius, Pillars of Snow? Crystal Sanctum, a religious city-state with believers throughout Ardra, founded by one who claims to be God. Each burden with its own dignity, thus is the curtain drawn on a struggle in which the fate of nations rests. All is for one's homeland. Sorry, Saramax. War of the Visions. Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Now in development. Not even a release date. Not even a release window. I know what Dimensions is, Pillars of Snow. I was making a joke. My point was that there was like five Final Fantasy mobile games for a while there. Six, excuse me. This is super not Avengers. Okay. I don't know what I think of that, Rex. I really don't. There's a game coming out next year. What's it about? It's a game! What's its premise? It's a game that you play! Please welcome Sebastian Wojciechowski, Studio Head, People Can Fly. Yeah, no kidding, Eric. It's a video game. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sebastian Wojciechowski, Studio Head of People Can Fly, the studio behind Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. Yeah, any Bulletstorm fans in the house? All right. Well, let me tell you, it feels great to be here and feels amazing to be able to finally announce Outriders. I'll tell you about it, but screw you. I'd like to thank the team at People Can Fly. You guys are amazing. And I know that some of you are watching this live, even though it's 4 a.m. in the morning in Poland. So <laughs> make a noise for them, please. Okay, if he actually doesn't tell anything about it. Thank you. And of course, Square Enix for the help and support as we work together on this exciting new IP. You know, over the past few years, People Can Fly has grown to over 200 developers and four studios across Poland, the UK, and most recently, the US, to bring you what is our most ambitious shooter to date. To present more... <laughs> to present more of our vision, I would like to take this moment to introduce a short video from our game director, Bartek Mita. Okay. So thanks a lot 
more on Outriders this winter. Thank you. Oh, I agree. Square Enix so far is easily like the best uh, conference this E3. We sure, tell you about the game, DNA. but we won't. It's our passion, and it's what we do. Outriders draws on all our experience from all our previous titles. It's a game we wanted to make for a very long time. We're not going to tell you what it is, but we want to make back out. We describe Outriders as a dark, modern shooter built with traditional values. By that, I mean we are creating an experience with a strong story that you can enjoy with your friends or on your own. Co-op is good. We want to tell a complete story. We are confident we are building a shooter with a powerful gunplay, incredible weaponry, and a hostile new world we want to spend many hours in. It's, it's a game we've had in our heads ever since People Can Fly left Epic Games. Outriders is a 1-2 or 3-player drop-in, drop-out co-op shooter. In our game, you will create your own Outrider and journey across the hostile planet of Enoch in search of the source of a mysterious signal. It's, it's a pretty dark and unforgiving world, and yes, there is a lot more depth to the game, but I can't say too much more right now. So we did learn one fact about the game. It has co-op. It's a good fact, don't mistake me, it's just... That is literally all we learned there, was... It has co-op. Oh, and it's story-based. I guess it's okay. Story-driven co-op. There you go. Two, two facts. Two facts. I'm with it, Cloud of the Stars. I love co-op. I think we need more co-op in the world. And that really is all they're doing. Reincarnation is the foundation of our way of life. We what? celebrate the lives we've been given and offer up prayers for the next. It is grief of death which shackles the living and causes the dead to stray. Indeed, there is no greater affront to reincarnation. So we turn our grief to joy as we send off the dead. But the souls of those who held back their tears in life still need salvation in death. That sounds like fun to me, Rex. To the also, that would be awesome, Pyro. The Watchers sever the bonds that tie the lost to this world. I feel like we've already heard about this. This is just them showing us more details. They navigate the emotions of the living and the dead. They prize life above all else. Looks Diablo-esque. Yeah, I think so, Ethel. Looks like we got a kind of limit bar in the lower left there. It's the story of one watcher. I mean, it looks neat, but RPG Factory has yet to make something I like. So, what's up, Rex? It is coming out on Switch, PS4, and PC, so that's nice. We're almost done with the portraits. What? Don't do that kind of a tease. Huh. I don't 
don't think they found the code. This looks like they re-engineered the code. You'll notice it is a remaster, not a remake. But it looks like a decent remaster. So I'll probably buy the crap out of this. Please be on the Switch. Please be on the Switch. Be on the PC too, but please be on the Switch. Yes! PS4, Switch, Xbone, PC. Yeah! I'm happy about that. the first thing that's actually surprised me at this conference. Oh, uh, so finally, here you go, Max Time. Crystal Dynamics! Eidos, Montreal. This looks like a take on the MCU. Tony, Thor, the cables. Cap, what's going on over there? Start the Chimera. What's your status? No, stay on task. There's still some buildings on this bridge. murderers. Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. Well, we all lost something that day. But that's not how this story ends. Please have caught. What are we waiting for? You'll notice Please basically welcome Sean Eskai, creative director, Crystal Dynamics. You'll notice almost all the characters were playable there, by the way. Creative director, Marvel Games. Yeah, no date, no systems. Which means this is a ways out. Which means my interest just went away. Yeah. <laughs> Get back to me in a year. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We are incredibly excited to reveal Marvel's Avengers to the world. A few years ago, 
Crystal Dynamics and Marvel began collaborating on an original Avengers game, one that combined epic action adventure with cinematic storytelling, a game where we as players can experience in both single player and co-op what it's like to be Earth's mightiest heroes. Do I have any true believers in the house? <clears throat> yes! Awesome. Because you will instantly recognize your favorite superheroes and villains, but you'll also see that they're unique to this game, as this is Crystal's interpretation of these iconic characters. Our story begins at A-Day, as San Francisco celebrates the opening of the Avengers West Coast headquarters, and the team's custom helicarrier, outfitted with a strange experimental energy source. However, the day turns deadly when an attempt to steal this new technology results in massive destruction. Blamed for the tragedy, the Avengers are outlawed and our heroes disband. Five years later, a horrific evil threatens the world. And our only hope is to reassemble Earth's mightiest heroes. You'll play as your favorite Avengers in an all-new original story showcasing authentic Marvel heroism and humanity. It's about losing what matters to you most and fighting to get it back. Yeah! Yeah! Where's Hawkeye? <laughs> Most importantly, this is a story about self-acceptance in the face of adversity, about embracing our individual powers and learning that together we are mighty. <laughs> Except for Hawkeye. You'll lead the team as a legendary super soldier, Captain America. You'll call down the lightning as the Asgardian god of thunder, Thor. You'll channel the anger of scientist Bruce Banner by unleashing the Hulk. You'll gather intel and strike swiftly as the ultimate tactical spy, Black Widow. And finally, you'll blast through the sky as the charismatic Tony Stark. And it'll actually be better than Anthem. World ...as the armored Iron Man. To bring this incredible story to life, we've assembled an all-star cast. I'll let them introduce themselves. So, here we are. Avengers assembled. Who are you people again? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Troy Baker, and I play Bruce Banner. Hi, I'm Jeff Shine, and I play Captain America. Hi, I'm Travis Willingham, and I play Thor. Hi, I'm Laura Bailey, and I'm playing Black Widow. Hi, I'm Nolan North, and I play Tony Stark. There's certain characters I don't think you ever have to be uh, talked into. <laughs> yeah. You know, wow. so we'd like to have you play Tony Travis, Stark. Travis, Laura, yeah. Nolan, and Troy on one game. You know, everybody always portrays him as this super confident character. and I think it, it's a mask for, for him. I think he's a, one of the most vulnerable guys. I think Bruce is just such a cool character. A lot of people are, are really quick to, to bring out the big green, but I think that, that Bruce is a super complex character. He's fun, and I've never played him before. What is very relatable about Natasha is she's extremely capable, but she's at the core. She's human. She's surrounded what? by all of this larger than life stuff. I've never heard of Laura Bailey, Athel, sorry. I feel like Thor got really interesting in the last like 10 or 15 years. From, for me, I, I like where he's kind of landed in the, the public eye, you know. One of the things I think is cool about Cap is I never feel like he, uh, he necessarily wants to be a leader. He accepts that he is. I feel like sometimes the best leaders are the ones who don't necessarily want to be, but they're right for the job. Having an original story to tell as well, what they've done at Crystal Dynamics is great, so I think everybody's gonna be pretty stoked. The Avengers are at their best when they are all together, but the chemistry is, <laughs> it 
do not shake. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Can't wait for you to be able to play the game. But right now, you don't have to wait for some exclusive content. Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. Did you even check the science? Did you check It was a science? heist, Bruce. No. We were outsmarted. No. The Terrigen reactor was unstable, okay. and you knew that, you knew that, and you still paraded it before the entire world. So what? We just give up? We didn't give up, Tony. We failed. At least I can admit that. We failed him. We failed him. Please welcome Scott Amos, Head of Studio, and Megan Marie, Senior Community and Social Media Manager, Crystal Dynamics. You know what's funny is they've told us very little about the actual gameplay here, but I'm still very excited. Co-op. Strong single, st single story, probably congruent with Spider-Man. Absolutely. You've just, <laughs> you've just seen a high-level view of the cinematic and character-driven campaign of Marvel's Avengers. But launch is only the beginning of this adventure. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years with exciting new content released at a regular basis. Like the Avengers, you and your friends are stronger together. You'll assemble into teams of up to four players online. Online co-op is even better. Where you can master extraordinary abilities, where you can customize a growing roster of heroes and defend the Earth from ever escalating threats. Yes! That sounds okay. like a challenge mode thing, not the main game. And to well, we should sure totally co-op this if we can. Absolutely, Rex. We're incredibly thrilled to announce that every new superhero and every new region will be delivered at no additional cost. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. So our promise to the community is that we won't have random loot boxes or pay-to-win scenarios. Yeah. This game represents a collaboration across Crystal Dynamics, Marvel Games, I know you're out here, IDOS Montreal, these guys are here, Nixie Software, our new Crystal Northwest studio, and everyone at Square Enix. So our game is about embracing your powers and living your superhero dreams. We have an exclusive gameplay demo in our booth that will show you more of the core campaign, its original story, and our superheroes in action. So Marvel's Avengers will release worldwide on PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC. We got you covered. <laughs> and we're excited to be partnering with PlayStation to bring some awesome surprises to the PlayStation audience. <laughs> including early beta access <laughs> and unique benefits that we'll be revealing in the future. PC, by the way. Before we go, we're doing the PC release. We have one final glimpse into our world including when you'll get to play this game. <laughs> this is what's next for the Avengers. Thank you, true believers. Damn it. Progress, Hank. I have a plan, but it's risky. Hank, that doesn't look ready. Come on, Tony, live a little. Hank, really? It worked! It's sort of cute when they're small. Ah, I didn't doubt you for a second, Hank! May 15th, 2020.
Thank goodness it's not in March, am I right? Yeah, pretty sure that's it at that point. Random FF9 music. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of disclaimers. And that, that should be it. This feels like an outro screen. Yep, nope. That's an outro screen. What was the, that was crap, right? <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Uh, where are you guys at? Where's my chat? There's my chat. There you guys are. What do you think? I see a few people talking in all caps. That's usually a good sign. Let's go ahead and mix this. Yep. There we go. I have never been ashamed to admit that I am wrong. I was pretty cynical, and to be completely blunt, at first my cynicism was absolutely verified. And then they kind of kept showing new stuff. So we, we, we've, got a, we've got a thing on the bingo there, upper left. I don't, I don't know, do you, think, do you think Square Enix nailed it? I don't know, guys. I mean, I mean, they they did have. <laughs> no, Pyro. We still haven't had real gameplay footage, and we probably won't for a while. We've had the closest thing to it. Honestly, we're probably not going to get real gameplay footage in general. But yeah, sure. Skronix nailed it. They did. They did. That's our second bingo. No, it's not real gameplay, Pyro. It's... Oh, jeez, it's going to be forever, Rax. <laughs> yeah, but not for us, Disco. Hmm. Let's see, something meme-worthy? No. Bullet point-looking game? Oh, my God. We actually did have a bullet point-looking game at the Square Enix thing. That, that World War II shooter. Right? That World War II shooter was absolutely a bullet point. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, there's our bullet point game. Ubisoft didn't do anything ridiculous, so that's off the case. E EA didn't showcase anything really great, so that's off the thing. Uh, real gameplay footage, Nintendo is our last hope for that. Something meme-worthy, Nintendo is our last hope. Metroid Prime 4, duh. That, no, that is not real gameplay. I'm sorry, that's not what real gameplay means. I will tell you if real gameplay happens. I expected it with Ubisoft. I didn't get it with Ubisoft. So we'll see what Nintendo does. Basically, yeah, Pyro. Anyways. FF8 remaster. I, I, I'm with Rax. It looks like... That's, I, I hate that that's the first thing I go to, but that, that's the thing that most excited me of that whole thing. It, it looks like they reverse engineered it, just like they did with Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Remix. It's, it, it looks like they took it back and said, yep, and poured it together. And it looks good, and I'm absolutely hyped for it. I am totally buying that on the Switch, like as soon as it comes out. <sighs> FF7R? I'm going to say, I, I have some in-depth thoughts there, I really do. But I am very glad that they actually showed us... Like, they had a guy come out and explain some of the specific mechanics and constructs of the gameplay. That's awesome. It's also the closest thing we've seen to that in E3 to date. And by that I mean this E3, this year's E3. What else? Uh, we had... I wasn't taking notes. I should have taken notes during that one. I'm going to have to rewatch my own VOD. The, I guess we could talk about the Avengers game, because that was the thing they showed. Although, again, I don't have much else to share about that. Co-op, Spider-Man contingency, or Spider-Man continuity, excuse me. Single-player campaign, they're adding new heroes for free. Online co-op, 
possibly online co-op for the game. Not sure about that yet. It's a little unconfirmed. Looks cool. Life is Strange 2. I have absolutely no interest in that. But they showed off Life is Strange 2, and they showed off that they're not above trying to take advantage of streamers. Um, what else did they show? I know they showed other stuff I was interested in. No, Dream Whisperer. No. That was scripted gameplay. That's what that is. That's, that's the definition of scripted gameplay. Apparently this is Life is Strange 2 Episode 3. I don't know. Oh yeah, Dragon Quest Builders 2. I gotta be honest, I'm all, I was already super sold on that. I have already bought the game. Whenever it comes out, it will be getting here the day of. I can't wait. Saga. Yes, I'm very happy that Saga is coming out. I'm not sure I care personally, but as I mentioned before, if Saga 2 got the remaster treatment, Saga 3 deserves it. So that's awesome. Ah yes, Crystal Chronicles is getting a release on multiple platforms, including the phone. And even though I was I, I was making a joke when I was like, ah, go to hell with the phone thing. It, what I don't care. As long as it's on multiple platforms, if, as long as it's not just on the phone, cool. I'm with it. Oh yeah, they showed Tifa. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I have to make fun there. So many people are like, oh my god, where's Tifa? So many people in my chat were like, oh my god, where's Tifa? It's funny to me, especially since Tifa is actually my favorite character in Final Fantasy VII. No, not because of that. It's because she has the best and most interesting character arc. And they did a fascinating job with developing her into basically the exact opposite of her archetype. Although it's worth noting that most of the characters in FF7 are deliberately designed to be the opposite of their archetype, but that's neither here nor there. She does look fun to play as, absolutely. I also like how, based on how they're presenting it, with the... Each, each button press is a swing kind of a thing, and different range and different swings. It Basically, it looks like each character literally plays differently. Now, that sounds like a duh, but they could have very easily not done that. They didn't have to do that, and I'm glad that they are. So, yes. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to do slots at all. Doodly, 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 doodly. Beep, beep, beep. Hmm. I suppose if while we're talking about FF7R, we should also mention the fact that they're adding new cutscenes. I'll talk more about that during Lore Week. All I want to say about that is that that makes perfect sense, and that's exactly what I would do. If you gave me the power and the, the control over a remake of a game, I guarantee you I would put in new cutscenes. Of course I would! And, right? <laughs> this, this sounds like a duh thing to me. Of course I would. We'll see what they do with them. That's the only trick. Do I think they'll change the story? Well, now that's an interesting question. Because do you mean change the story from the original or change the story from the expanded? Which one, Max Time? Go ahead and tell me right now. Because I don't know which one you're talking about. The only thing I noticed is there's a pretty good chance that they're actually nixing Before Crisis from, from the continuity. Which I'm actually totally okay with because I, I don't like Before Crisis. Do I think they'll change the story from the original? Yes, absolutely. But I suppose I should clarify, I don't think they're going to... I think they're going to make it more fleshed out, make more sense. I doubt they're going to suddenly turn Sephiroth into Cloud's brother. Spoilers. Oh, that thing. Yeah, I, uh, we'll talk about that during Lower Week next time. I'll tell you one thing. If you want me to be negative about FF7R, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm going to be negative about FF7R, because I do have one complaint right now. Can anyone guess what it is? Actually, it's not the stagger. I forgot about that. Sorry. So, so there's two things. <laughs> I should explain why I don't like the stagger thing really quick. 
And it's not just because FF13. It's not because it's a bad mechanic. It's because of the fact that the last time they used Stagger, they leaned on it. Stagger wasn't a gimmick in Final Fantasy XIII. It was the gimmick of Final Fantasy XIII. It was normal combat. You get six hours into FF13, and you are at the point where every trash fight requires staggering. All of them. So we'll see. We'll see what they do with it. I'm okay with the concept of stagger. I just hate the way they implemented it in 13. But no, the other thing I was talking about is the boss. <laughs> you guys saw that, right? You guys saw how long that boss took? You saw how many chops and edits they had throughout that boss fight? And it was still like a minute and a half boss fight? I'll actually have to time it later. He looks a little bit too spongy, especially for the first boss of the game. That being said, I do love the idea of them actually fleshing out the boss fights to be more gimmicky, to add more mechanics to them, to add more variety to them. In fact, you'll notice, uh, oh, what's his name, Airbuster? It's the guy you fight after the Sector 5 reactor. I can't, it's the, the floating robot. It goes, I can't think of his name. They showed him briefly, too, for like 20 seconds. And you could see, even in those 20 seconds, that he has his own mechanics and gimmicks, too. Which is good. Airbuster. That's it, Airbuster. So, I'm down with that. I am absolutely down with that. God, we have, we have hit a lot of squares this E3. My goodness. Hmm. It totally did, Veldrin. Which, again, I'm okay with, except for the HP part. Yeah, so you notice they had a bike section with Jesse. In fact, so we've, we've already talked, they're adding new cutscenes. They're actually adding new gameplay sections, too, because that bike scene was not in the original. Obviously. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Will they expand the Golden Saucer? Good question. Considering how tight to the chest they've been, and we'll talk about this Sunday too, I have a feeling, and I think most people agree on this, I have a feeling that ep episode one of FF7R is just going to be Midgar. I mean, I, I've called that, everyone else has called that. It's, it's the obvious stopping point. And there's a fairly large chunk of territory to cover just in Midgar, especially if we're expanding as we've already seen them do. The only question for me is how many episodes are going to come after that, which we don't know. That's true, Pyro. They could have just been showcasing. Although you notice most of the hits were doing very low damage, even when he was staggered. I'll talk about that Sunday, Alex. I have thoughts on that and I can't summarize. That's true. Red Dead Redemption 2 was two Blu-rays. I had to uninstall RDR2 just to fill up, to open up space on my PS4 once we were done with the RDR2 run. Anyways. What else did they show? I know they showed a bunch of stuff, but for some reason all I could think of is Avengers, FF8, and FF7. <laughs> I need to re I need to rewatch my own pod. It is late, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and chop off the local recording.